What is going on guys, it is WrestleMania here, back with another video. The second season finale of The Dark Side of the Ring covered the tragic death of Owen Hart. But did fans learn anything new? Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 14 things we learned from the last days of Owen Hart. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos. The Dark Side of the Ring has a tendency to condense complicated situations into a 40 minute program. As such, there is usually considerable information that is left out. However, we did learn some new things, and we'll fill in the details on important points raised in the episode. Number 1. Martha Hart is a Doctor One of the most amazing takeaways from the story is that Martha Hart is a Doctor. Although this episode didn't go into detail, Wrestlemia has learned that Martha Hart has a PhD, this being in social and developmental psychology, and she obtained this from the UK's prestigious Cambridge University. Number 2. Owen signed willingly to stay in WWE While the long-standing story has been that Owen Hart was forced to stay in the WWE after the events of the Montreal Screwjob and Bret Hart's jump to WCW, Dark Side of the Ring states that Owen actually stayed in the WWE as he saw it as an opportunity to find greater success, his endgame being to make enough money to retire from wrestling and focus on spending more time with his family. Jim Ross confirms the WWE gave Owen a new deal and that Owen was excited to go from being Brett's brother to being himself. Even though he's always admired and had a close relationship with his brother Brett, one could think that he may be living in his shadow and wanted to branch out. Just like anybody would. Number 3. Owen was designed to mock WCW Sting while it's always been assumed that the Blue Blazer descended from the rafters was meant to mock WCW Sting doing the same, based on Martha Hart's comments during this episode, it seemed that this was the primary purpose of the stunt as opposed to mocking the Blue Blazers over the top character. It's obvious that WWE was willing to do anything just to mock the competition. But just remember, WCW wasn't afraid to ever mock WWE and they did so on several occasions. Number 4. Owen's stunt company was top notch. There have been seven different schools of thought on who was responsible for the WWE setting up Owen's stunt, but this episode briefly touched on how the wrong rigging was used in Owen's fatal stunt. Martha discussed how Owen's first time doing the stunt was handled by an extremely professional team, while the stunt handled the night of his passing was not. The only thing here was that Dark Side of the Ring failed to bring up the very different conditions between the stunt that went well and the stunt that ended in Owen's passing. If you read Martha's book Broken Hearts, The Life and Death of Owen Hart, you'll see the WWF hired what appears to be a stunt outfit with a poor reputation, with Martha suggesting it was done to save the WWF money. Her book also goes into much more details about why the stunt went wrong, something one would think Dark Side of the Ring would want to discuss. Number 5. Martha Hart Still Has the Rigging one of the true shockers of this episode was the revelation that Martha Hart still has the rigging that apparently caused her husband's fatal fall. It's not that she keeps it in a trophy case somewhere, but the fact she still holds it may seem unsettling to some. Number 6. Owen said look out before he hit the ground. Owen's first thought as he fell seemingly to the safety of everyone around him was look out. According to eyewitnesses at the show, Owen shouted, look out, as he fell, hoping that no one would be hurt or killed by his plummeting body. Indeed, referee Jimmy Corderas recalls Owen's body brushing against him as it fell and Corderas looking down to realise what had happened. Interestingly enough, this is the one moment where we actually see a very touching moment from Jim Cornette. Cornette can't even almost get the words out as to Owen being so brave in the fall. This man knew that his death was imminent, and just before it, he wanted to know that everyone was safe around him at least. Number 7. Owen never questioned the stunt's safety This is an interesting claim because Martha Hart claims Owen seemed comfortable with the stunt to her. Listening to her story, she conveys the idea that Owen would not have done the stunt if he thought it was dangerous because her husband was a perfectionist. This led her to believe that his passing was caused by negligence. However, others talked about how Owen seemed nervous the day of the stunt. Jim Ross talked about how Owen wasn't himself, and Owen almost sensed himself he wasn't going to survive. Number 8. JR only had 10 seconds from learning of Owen's passing to announce it 
Jim Ross has discussed this in his memoir Under the Black Hat, but fans may not know that this night, Jim Ross kept trying to get updates on Owen's condition from the backstage area. But finally, Kevin Dunn informed Ross that Owen had passed and that the show was returning to air in 10 seconds, with Ross scrambling to find the words to convey what had just happened. Number 9. Martha was horrified by Owen's court but was comforted by his hair. Just as she does in her book, Martha recalls how the sight of Owen's hair comforted her and reminded her of him before his passing. What she doesn't say in this episode is how it made sure Owen had an open casket funeral so people could see that he was truly gone. Number 10. Owen's son said his dad's passing turned his mom into a fighter. Martha and Owen's son, O.G. Hart, recalls how his dad's passing transformed his mom into a fighter. Martha was immediately determined to find out what had happened to her husband to make sure that he obtained justice. Number 11, Martha took her kids to the catwalk in the Kemper Arena. One of the biggest revelations was that Martha took her son and daughter to the Kemper Arena where Owen's fatal stunt occurred and had them walk the catwalk where he fell from. She explained she wanted her children to know what had happened and for them to have the opportunity to know as opposed to not knowing and regretted it later on in life. Number 12. Martha claims some Hart family members stole documents. Martha noted how family members stole her legal documents and sent them to the WWF. She talked about how some people in the family seemed determined to wreck her lawsuit. Again, it's regrettable that the Dark Side of the Ring didn't detail the specific instances of this happening as it would have painted a broader picture of the opposition Martha faced. Number 13. The investigation was marred by Over the Edge continuing. One of the most hotly debated issues in professional wrestling is whether the Over the Edge pay-per-view should have continued after Owen's accident, with some people arguing that the show must go on, while others argued it needed to stop out of respect to Owen's memory. However, a more important argument was stressed in the episode, that the show should have been stopped in order to construct a crime scene and obtain whatever evidence there was from the accident. Martha Hart brought up that the ring was damaged from Owen's fall and that the wrestlers worked in an uneven ring. She believes the police should have stopped the show right there and then. Number 14. Jim Ross said that it was the worst day of his life. Jim Ross spoke at length about the day Owen fell to his death, stating that it was the worst day of his wrestling career and possibly the worst day of his life. Ross said he still thinks about it to this day. Like most of its programs, the episode of The Dark Side of the Ring provided a brief overview of the events involved in the subject being covered. It's unknown how much Martha Hart was limited in saying about the case, but her book Broken Hearts contains far more details and many critical details mentioned above that were left out. While it was important to know Owen's incredible abilities as a wrestler and his memory as a good dad, more should have been spent on the subject in question, Owen's death. While Dark Side of the Ring presented some new information, long-term WWE attorney Jerry McDevitt issued a statement giving what he claims is the WWE side of the story. The reality is we're never told our side of the story of what happened, at least not outside of court. We're told it in court, but when she talks about the way the lawsuit unfolded over the years, it really isn't accurate what she's saying. What she did whenever this happened is she hired a lawyer in Kansas City who we caught essentially trying to fix the judicial selection process to get a judge that was more to their liking. We caught them and went all the way to the Missouri Supreme Court. The Missouri Supreme Court said, no, 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 we're not going to let that happen. They essentially appointed an independent judge to come from outside of Kansas City to oversee the proceedings. We were basically trying to find out what happened that night. Martha was not even remotely interested in finding out what happened that night. She just wanted to use it as a vehicle to beat up a business that she didn't like that her husband was in. The wrestling business. McDevitt made some bold claims against Martha. Her and her lawyer in reality had tried to get the members of the Hart family, Owen's brothers and sisters, to sign a document in which they would agree to support Martha and her case and they would not talk to WWE. In exchange for that, they were all promised a share of any verdict or settlement, which is highly illegal, completely improper, and you can get into big trouble for that. What happened was some of the members of the Hart family were offended by this because they realized this was wrong. They knew this was wrong and they faxed me those documents, which I fell out of the chair when I read them. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. This is completely illegal. You can't do this stuff. All this was then brought to the attention of the judge in Kansas City. Dr. Hart would issue her own response to the WWE's attorney. In response to Jerry McDevitt's recent comments, I want to make it very clear if there was one person on this planet who would get to the bottom of what happened to my husband, Owen, it was me. The defense, on the other hand, was doing everything in their power to muddy the waters, as they tried to continue to do, in an effort to detract from the case because they didn't have one. 
I read every single affidavit taken, sat through endless face-to-face -face depositions and spent over a year of my life dissecting every solitary fact of this case. To insinuate for one second that I of all people did not care about the truth behind Owen's death but instead was more interested in a ridiculous vendetta against the wrestling business is beyond the pale. Martha Hart then turned her attention to WWE's attorney and those in charge. Jerry McDevitt's comments are absolutely absurd, reckless and pathetic. I'm not surprised that the WWE would trot out Mr. McDevitt to do damage control. After all, the events surrounding Owen's death and the aftermath that followed are extremely disturbing and do not reflect well on their company. Not to mention that Linda McMahon was the acting CEO of the WWF, now WWE, at the time of Owen's death, which does not bode well for them either, especially given her ties to President Donald Trump and his administration. At the end of the day, truth has always been my defense, and for anyone who seeks it regarding this case and the events surrounding Owen's death, I suggest they read my book. It's all there. It's all in there. While the argument can be made that Martha Hart's book only presents one side of the story, the episode Dark Side of the Ring only seemed to present her side, which begs the question why the producers didn't go further in exploring the bold claims made in Martha's book. But there you have it guys, 14 things we learned from Owen Hart's episode of Dark Side of the Ring. Be sure to leave your comments down below, subscribe if you haven't already, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.